The funny thing was, before, before we started the auditions, um, I knew a guy called Ian Gillen, and I sent out word to ask him if he'd be interested, and he, he wasn't interested. He said, you'll never get anywhere. <laughs> <laughs> so it's kind of comical, well, ironic, you know, that he ended up getting the job anyway. And the other guys had never heard of him. <laughs> we started in 68, John Lord and myself, and we put the band together. And I, I don't think we quite knew what direction that we had. And we kind of um, flim-flammed around in certain areas. I think the first album was, it was a recording of everything we'd learned. I, I don't think we had anything else. I think that was it. Yeah, everybody was fine. They all seemed uh, pretty level-headed guys, and uh, none of the problems usually associated with people having to rub along together. You know, we all seemed to be striving for the same ideal, which was to create something, something new, something different. So much than... It was Richie that basically said, "Rod's a very average singer, and Nicky's a great rock and roll bass player, but that's not where we're going." The limitations of Rod's voice for where the music was starting to, to get pushed was starting to show. Uh, we were just um, floundering. They were desperate for a really, really outstanding lead singer. And it was just another changeover, it was another move, but this time it was a bit special. And uh... Part two was the best lineup musically, without a doubt. John was a great musician, and Ian was just an exceptional drummer. Roger is a very talented writer. Ian Gillen was the kind of guy you'd see down the pub, you know, having a beer, having a punch up. But what Richie did was different from anybody else, and that made it special. It's pretty simple. Deep Purple were better than everybody else. It was such a violently out of control sound. The, the nastier you played, the better it sounded. Yeah, yeah, they played loud. It was amazing. It was an incredible feeling to be that popular. We've been stung by customs and excise for uh, not paying tax on some records. We had discounts, we had bootlegs. I think that's how Virgin started. And bootleg albums, of course, were cheap. But we did have a go at Virgin. My manager called me and said, hey, I'm down here with the band, and there's this problem with Richie, can't play. Would you be willing to come down and, and, and you know, cover for him and sit in? And, you know, I was like freaked out. Equavoy Deep Purple. Smash your way through the stomach, out with axes. And suddenly there was an almighty crash and an axe came through my door. There certainly was a riot over insufficient tickets. Deep Purple in Rock was such a huge hit. And all of a sudden we were, we were big. Deep Purple in Rock was a big hit, but Superstar was even bigger. And you know, the coolest thing about this is it did happen. 